If Jesus is your king, put your hands together and worship him. <laughs> Lift your hands above your heads and give him praise. If he's your king, if he's your Lord, if he rules over your life, if you serve no other God but him, if he's the one that you wake up to say thank you to, lift up your hands above your heads and give the Lord a wonderful shout. If you're excited that our Father in the Lord is back with us, put your hands together and give the Lord a big shout of praise. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Daddy, you're welcome. This first song is the glory of the Lord, but we are dedicating to the pastor to tell him that we'll miss him so much. Be blessed in Jesus' name. you so much. God bless you as you come. You know it's a time of refreshing for us again. Praise God. God does marvelous things. Hallelujah.
marvelous. What the Lord is doing in this church is marvelous. So we give him back all that glory in Jesus' name. Let's take this song. We lift your name higher. 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 We lift your name adoration and worship. One manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. Be thou exalted and honored in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity of hearing your word. The Bible says, in trance of your word given life, we ask for enlightenment in our being in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, oh God, that your word is not like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces. We ask, oh God, let your word break the rock into pieces. In the name of Jesus, your word is like fire that consumes the wood. Let there be a consumption. We will not go the same, oh God. Speak to us by your power. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. I'll just be doing three things. One, I will do commend, recommendation. Two, I will do recognition. And three, I'll bring the message. Amen. Amen. Commendation. I want to tell you that you're a great church. Amen. You will ask me, how do I know? I was here in September for the mission summit and saw how strategically this church is sponsoring mission work. It's so wonderful. You are a great church. I don't want to know how large a church is, crowd they are pulling, but if you are not in the kingdom business, in reality, you are not a great church. But this church is a great church. Amen. Number two. How do I know? This church is a great church. Your neighborhood outreaches is second to none. So give God glory in the name of Jesus. 
This church is a great church. How do I know? Let me tell you, this church has boosted the image of first organization. Whether you agree or not agree, that's what I know. Praise the Lord. In various ways. There are some people I have relationship with, and whenever I influence them for Christ, do you know where they come? They come to Asokoro Church. People like good things. <laughs> Why not come to my church? But they will say, I'm now in Asokoro Church. I have two of them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And when you are boasting with uh, your church is big, your church is beautiful, I will ask you, have you gone to Asokoro Church? I say for square. And so, church, you are a great church. Praise the Lord. Second one is recognition. I want to recognize all the pastors, leaders, for what they are doing here, especially. I want to recognize my organ, your senior pastor. Amen. I came into Lagos in 1988 from the east, and I met him. And you see, when you are a leader, you don't know people are following you. When you are a good leader, you don't know people are looking at you. And since that time, I want to let you know that I've been following him. Praise the Lord. And God has used him to make a great impact in my life. That's recognition. Praise the Lord. Now we we'll go to the message. Amen. Praise the Lord. In four square organization, the month of June is very remarkable in the sense that it gives us opportunity to go around churches. And I've been scheduled to speak with us today, to fellowship with you. And the topic which is being preached everywhere in Foursquare organization in Nigeria, even the general of Asia is speaking on this topic, is redeeming the time by understanding the days. Redeeming the time by understanding the days. Redeeming the time by understanding the days. What day? Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, 16b. Ephesians chapter 5, 16. The Bible says, if I start from 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. So I'm told to come and tell us that the days are evil. The days we are are evil. They are evil days, and therefore we must redeem the time. We must walk wisely. We must walk wisely. Time is a gift from God, and is given equally. And when we say redeeming, we are saying buying back. Buying back to recover. So what are we saying? That the days are evil. And that we should understand that the days are evil. And what we mean by understanding, we mean ability to judge. Judge that the days are evil. Ability to learn. Learn that the days are evil. Ability to make decisions in the face of evil days. What am I going to do? That is understanding of the evil days. The days are really evil. And we can correlate this to what Apostle Paul told this, uh, wrote in 2 Timothy. That there, are, there will be a perilous time. Then there will be so evil. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 12. I'd like us to go through that, play, that book. For us to know what has been said, 3, 1 to 12. 
2 Timothy 3, 1 to 12. The Bible says, But notice that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of many, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but deny his power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into the households and make uh, captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various laws, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Amen. In verse 12, say, Yes, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Praise the Lord. I want to tell us that the days are very, very evil. And we should walk wisely. We can differentiate between a wise person, a wise woman, a wise man, a wise girl in these days. Who can we say to be a wise person? Or unwise person? Because Life is a walk. Every day we walk through life. And either you are wise walking through life or you are un unwise walking through life. There are two people. The unwise people and the wise people. A wise person is somebody who is thoughtless. Somebody who is careless. Somebody who is uncaring. And somebody who is worldly minded. He arises in the morning and goes to work on or do other daily routine with little thought about God. With little thought about God. That man, that woman, that girl is unwise. He makes mistakes. And he will say, it doesn't matter. He will say, making mistake is a way of life. That is an unwise person. But a wise person is somebody that is thoughtful. Is somebody that is careful. Is somebody that is caring. Is somebody that is spiritually minded. This person has a mission on it. Wise person. He has a mission where he makes mistakes as he walks through life. He will go back to God. That's a wise person. This time, the days are evil. And when we say evil, there are many things that confront us as Christians. There are many things that will make us to confront us in our faith. They are everywhere. There are many evils. Praise the Lord. And when we say evil, we refer to those things that confront you personally. Those things that make you not to walk according to the will of God. There are so much evil that confronts us. And to keep us alert. And to make us not to focus on the purpose of God for your life. And I want to let you know that these days, there are evil days. Praise the Lord. Then, when we know that the days are evil, what are we going to do? It's better for me and you to be wise enough. One of the things that I and you, that we must do, we must redeem the time with an understanding in prayers. We must redeem the time with an understanding in prayers. Prayer is the ordained way we can reach God. There's no other way. If you think there are other ways you can reach God, no. It's only by prayers I and you can reach God. And then we must 
ensure that we involve ourselves in prayers. Not just prayers, but ceaseless prayers. This is not the time not to pray. This is not the time to have a break in prayers. This is the time to have a ceaseless prayer. Praise the Lord. Prayer. Very important. The Bible enjoins us. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We need to stay out of the fellowship and communion with God. And we need to have a great and deep understanding of God. And you can only have it in prayer. Go and have a restoration of your prayer life. Prayer will help you to learn more about God. Involve yourself in prayer. Prayer will make you not to be an empty Christian. You need to be a God carrier to go through these evil days. I always tell people, if you think the days will be less evil, no. I'm sorry. It's not a prophecy of doom, but it's biblical. He said, iniquity shall abound. And so if you think that you have been less evil, no. But what are you going to do as a Christian? Engage yourself in ceaseless prayer. When you engage yourself in ceaseless prayer, what you are doing is you are bringing divine to your affairs and your situation. When you are involved in ceaseless prayer, what you are doing is to bring the glory of God and presence of God in your life. When you are involved in ceaseless prayer, what you are doing is to bring hand the God. The hand of God in your life. When you are involved in system, what you are doing is to involve angels. Many of us allow angels to be idle. But I want to let you know, you can activate the angels. The Bible said they, they minister to the heads of salvation. They are there for my ministration. They are there for your ministration. But I want to let you know how you can reactivate and activate them. It's by prayers. Praise the Lord. When we say ceaseless prayer, we are meaning bringing down the hand of God. The Bible says, why must we also just pray? Let me tell you, Satan has not stopped causing havoc. And you can stop Satan by the havoc he's causing by praying. In Job chapter 1 verse 6, Satan said, I go to and fro the whole earth. Going, doing what? Causing evil. If you have that knowledge, you can stop Satan. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, in Matthew chapter 26 verse 41, it says, watch and pray that you will not enter into temptation. Watch and pray. Watch Jesus said, watch and pray. So what we are saying is, the only way, as a Christian, when this evil will continue to go on, increase, because it will continue to increase. The only way out is to be a candidate of prayer. Amen. 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 What kind of prayer are we talking about? A prayer that will bring down the glory of God. A prayer that will bring down the kingdom. A prayer, not just transactional prayer. That's what I call transactional prayer. That prayer, you will be praying like a child. Give me this. Give me that. I've not got this. Oh God, give me this. It's good. But also we must be involved to bring down the kingdom. Amen. We are expected to pray down God's kingdom. Pray down his kingdom. Not transactional prayers that embodies or 
acting like children, give me this or give me that. But it will be the one that will establish his kingdom in the heart of and the life of people. Have you involved God in prayers, asking for salvation of souls or men? Are you burdened about souls of men? Is your prayer life and list also involved praying for this nation? Are you involved also to pray for the ministers of the gospel of Jesus that the gospel will go unhindered? These are kingdom prayers. Have you prayed and said, Lord, we want to increase in, in, in our number in the church. Have you prayed? Are you burdened? That the righteousness will be established in the church and the nations. These are the kingdom prayers. Praying earnestly and fervently. Have you been in gross? That your prayers will be that. That. We bring down the glory of God. And it is your body that the glory will come down. It's not just praying mundane. About mundane things are materialist things. But also the kingdom, that the kingdom be established. That's what message I was told to come and give us. That the time is evil and we need more to be involved in kingdom things, even praying down the kingdom of God. That the kingdom of God, the kingdom of this world will be the kingdom of his dear son. The kingdom of this world will be part of your prayer. Oh God, let the kingdom of this world be the kingdom of his dear son. That is how we can go through this evil day. Praise the Lord. Also, we are expected to pray earnestly and fervently. What does it mean by earnest prayer? Praying seriously, with eagerness, with intentness, with fixed determination. Praying fervently means expecting particular enthusiasm. How many of us enjoy and look forward to come and pray? Are you praying with zeal? Are you praying with enthusiasm? Are you praying with expectation? Are you praying that your prayer will bring a change? Seriousness. Taking prayer as a serious business. That's the message. Earnestly. Fervently. Committed to prayers. Amen. Praying with zeal and conviction. Persistent prayer. Showing passion. Be passionate about prayers. Give yourself to prayers. Praise the Lord. An example of a persistent, fervent, and earnest prayer can be seen in 1 Kings chapter 18, 42 to 45. 1 Kings chapter 18. God is telling us 42 to 45. The Bible says, So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of the camel. Then he bowed down the ground and put his face between his knees. Earnest, fervent, committed, not casual prayer, not careless prayer, committed prayer. Take time out to pray. There is power in prayer. You will bring down the glory of God. You will bring down the power of God. You will make a change if you are committed to that. Take time. The Bible says he went down his knees and he put and he asked and start speaking. Praise the Lord. And said to his servant, go up now. Look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And seven times he said, go again. What a commitment. 
in prayer. Seven times he was looking forward for the rain to come. But he's committed himself into it. Seven times. Some of us will pray one time or two times and say it's all over. We will be weak. We have no expectation again. What God is telling us this morning is for us to rekindle our expectation unto prayers. He prayed. In verse 45. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. So he have rode away and went to Jezreel. He, he was committed to it. He prayed. He gave them to it. And the rain came. Praise the Lord. As you are involved in prayers, I want to tell you there will be changes in your life. As you are involved in prayers, I want to tell you there will be a, a remarkable thing God will do in your ministry. Try it. Try it. Take a time. Try God. And you will see what God will do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The second item God expects me and you to do in this evil time is to redeem our time in holy living. In holy living. God expects me and you to live a holy life. Amen. Amen. Without holiness, no man, you cannot see the Lord. If you want to accomplish this, there's need for you to live a holy life. It's a life of distinct and distinguished life in conformity to God's word. Holiness is a character of God which must be seen in every believer. Holiness is a character of God which must be seen in every believer. We have the DNA of God. And it's expected that we be like God. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. No matter the modernization and improvement in technology, the standard of God has not changed. The standard of God will never change. The standard of God can never change. And the standard of God will never be the same. And if you have this understanding, you then know that you should live by the rules of God and by His standards. If you want to get the best of God, if you want to see glory, if you want to see power, if you want to see a communion, good and great communion with God, my brother, the way out is to live like God. And then that will usher in His power and His presence in your life. If you want to touch God, you have not seen. If you want to touch God, you have not seen. And you want to see God as a real God. And God to be real to you. There's need for me and you to live a holy life. The reason is, when you are living a holy life unto God, you are also bringing in the presence of God in your life. When you are living a holy life unto God, what it means is that the purpose and plan of God will be accomplished in your life. When you are living as God wants you to live, what it means is that you are an instrument to execute the mandate of God. You will see you executing the mandate of God for living for him. Praise the Lord. The question is, why are believers not distinct? Why are believers not distinguished? We have failed in various ways. We need to live a consecrated life. When you are distinct and distinguished, my brother, there will be attraction. When you are distinct, and distinguish people that do not believe in you will believe in you later. That's the truth. In my family, I was one of those earlier on that we were born again. 
And they said all, all sorts of things. In Igbo land, you must belong to age grade. I said I won't belong. Many of them are coming out. And many of them are not belonging. They have seen and they are coming and they are joining. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Why should we live a holy life? Bible says we are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are the guide people are looking at. You are the epistle men are reading. There are five epistles. Matthew, Luke, John, Mark, and then you. And then you. If you don't know, in your office they are reading you. If you don't know in your marketplace, they are reading you. If you don't know in your family, they are reading you. That is essence why we must live a holy life. Praise the Lord. Because we are the epistle men are reading. Men are no more reading. Fully the Bible. But you and me are the epistle that are reading. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In Luke chapter 1, verse 6. Luke chapter 1, verse 6. We have a couple there as example of those that distinguish themselves and Bible recognize them. In 1 verse 6, it says, And they were both righteous, that is Zacharias and Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Blame. That's what God is saying today. Can you walk blameless? Can they say about you in your office that you are blameless? This one, I can vouch for him. This one is a Christian. Or would they say, even if you are a Christian there, I will not come close. What are people reading about you? What can people say about you? God is saying today, God is speaking to us that we must live a holy life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are the sort of the earth. We are to penetrate the world. God expects us to bring flavor. God expects us to penetrate. God expects us to be to sorting the earth. But what is God saying? And what are we doing? Are we sorting the earth? Are we penetrating enough? Are we influencing our environment? And also because we are the light of the world. In John chapter 8, 12, verse 12. Say, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. We are the light that will bring and chase out darkness. Amen. Amen. We are the ones that will chase up darkness of the world. The world, the Bible says that the world is full of darkness and darkness, the people. There's darkness everywhere. But who are the ones to chase out darkness in this world? It's me and you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is calling us that will be light that we ought to be. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5, 11 to 14. It's Ephesians chapter 5, 11 to 14. The Bible says, And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. 
but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever may manifest is light. Therefore, I say, awake you who sleep, arise from dead, and Christ will give you light. Light, we are the light to expose darkness. And because of that, God expects us. If you are to pass through these evil days, evil day that is to come, we are to live a holy life. A life with the character of God. Be a light. Be sought on this earth. Praise the Lord. I want to let you know that it's very dangerous to live a holy life. Very dangerous. One of the things is that you will be separated from God. When God is to speak on your behalf, God might not speak on your behalf. When God is to fight on your behalf, God might not fight for your behalf. When the angels are to work for you, to minister to you, they might not be there to minister to you. You will be on your own. Very dangerous to live unholy. Another thing is that you will be like the Pharisees. You don't allow people to go into the kingdom and yourself you are not going You will be a blockade. You won't go in. And you will not allow other people to go in. These are the hazards of living a holy life. These are the hazards of living unholy. Praise the Lord. So God is talking to us I'm calling us today because the days are evil. Another thing finally is that the glory of God will depart from you. You become what they call a cabot. Glory will depart. Glory will depart. Glory in all these areas will depart. Glory in your personal affairs will depart. Glory in your spiritual affairs will depart. The glory that is to ocean the power of God and bread juice will depart. God is speaking to us and telling us, redeem the time, recover it. For the days are evil. For the days are evil. In conclusion, the challenge is here that the days are evil. If the days were considered evil some 2,000 years ago, then we can see the reality on ground today. All the days are definitely getting more evil. Today, the descendants of those who sacrificed and brought the gospel to us have gone into all vices, lesbianism, self-same marriage, they got into homosexuality, and every evil in fact, there's a Time magazine, recent Time magazine, that there's a church in the U.S. where you come naked. But the pastors, they come naked. Do you know what's the reason? He said Jesus died and was buried naked. He said Jesus came and he was naked. They gave all sorts of reasons. But these are the evil days. Yes. And they are still coming. So what are we saying? God. Run away from evil. Run away from wickedness. Run away. And I want to let you know from the sincerity of my heart and for more than 50 years, more than 50, 50 something years I've lived here on earth, there's only way you can receive fulfillment in life. Knowledge of Jesus. I want to tell you that. Property and wealth will not give you fulfillment. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you, you will get it and you get tired. Fame will not give you fulfillment. You will get fame and you will get tired of fame. But there's a place you are going. I want to let you know Jesus is coming back again. Here's the truth. Please hear it. 
hear it. And if you are here and you have not made reconciliation with Christ, I did it in 1979. I have not regretted it. I have not. And we never regret it. Can you come this morning along to the kingdom? Jesus is calling us. If you want to run away from evil day, that is more to come. No way. No other way. If not, hold there fully. Surrender to him. In Jesus, you will receive wealth. In Jesus, you will receive comfort. In Jesus, you will receive, you will receive fulfillment. No other way. No other way. No other way, I tell you. May we rise up. Walk and walk away my sin. Oh, by the blood of Jesus. Oh, walk and take me on again. Nothing but the blood. Jesus, oh, 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 precious is the glory. Amen. God makes me white as snow. Opportunity for anyone who wants to make peace with Christ. I always say it and I will repeat it. There are only three people that know you. God knows you, Satan knows you, and you know yourself. You cannot run away from these three people. You cannot. If you are here, you've not given your life to Jesus. Sure, by raising up your hand, you want to come to the fold. Kingdom. That's a call. That's a call. You cannot pray if you don't know Jesus. And the days are evil. You cannot live a holy life if you don't know Jesus. The days are evil. If you are here, I don't want to know how many years you have been a Christian. You have been in church. And but you don't know Jesus. That's what I'm saying. Knowing Jesus. If you are here, come over here. I'll pray with you. We will share into the kingdom. Show by raising up your hand. Show by raising up your hand. We will share into the kingdom. There will be peace. You will receive peace. If you want to give your life to Jesus, come over here. Come over here. What Jesus will do is Jesus will forgive you. There will be forgiveness of sin. You know what Jesus will do? He will restore your life. There will be restoration. If you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus. Masa la bakoso telema. La koso tekaya. You want to give your life to Jesus. It's not something I will say close your eye. I will not say that. If you are waiting for that, no. Come over here. It's life. Come over here. 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 Thank you, Lord. I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. I want to make a second call. The second call is if you have heard the gospel, the word, and you realize you are weak in prayers, and you are realize that you are gone down in holy living, and you want to do a dedication, it's a time. Don't be ashamed. Come over here. The senior pastor is here to pray for you. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. God, I've heard your word. And I have seen that the days are evil. I want to renew my altar. And I want to renew myself once again. Oh Lord, I come before you. If you want to do that, come. Don't be ashamed. Come. Come. Here is dedication. Here is dedication. Nothing but 
Let's rise. Let's rise. There are two things that can determine the course of your life. Number one are those decisions you have made. The second one is your relationship with God. Decisions you have made and your relationship with God. There's a decision here was to follow Jesus. There's an alignment here we want to come back into his arms. And I just wait here for many more who want to say I want today to be one remarkable day in my life when I give my life to Jesus. I will just give you a minute to come. Please come. You may never have this chance again. You may never come again. You have no guarantee that you step out of this building and you will see tomorrow. The guarantee is not there. All heads bowed, please, if you don't mind. Thank you. Give them an opportunity to come. Where are you? Please come. Come this hour. The Savior is waiting for you. Ushers, help them to come quickly. Don't open your eyes. If you open your eyes, I'll bring you here. Close your eyes, please. Let's give our brethren, an opportunity to know Jesus. Ushers, bring them. Bring them quickly. Thank you. There are many more who will want to make a decision today to follow Jesus the rest of their lives. Please come. Please come. Please come. You know your life is out of alignment and you want to realign with Jesus. Why don't you come? The two most important things in your life are the decisions you made and your relationship with your God. Those are the things that drive your life. Hallelujah. Those who are giving their lives to Jesus, would you like to say this short prayer after me? I want to give my life to Jesus among you here. Who are they? Okay. Okay. Three of them. Four of them. Just say this short prayer after me, Lord Jesus. Thank you for today. I recognize that I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. Today, I turn my life over to you. Holy Spirit, come into my heart. I become your child today. Write my name in the book of life. Amen. Father, I want you to receive their prayer. The joy that you gave me over 40 years ago when I made this decision, release to them. Grant them joy unspeakable. Grant unto them joy they cannot explain. As the wind listeth, 
and where it blows, nobody knows. The same way, let your Holy Spirit take over these lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for many others, O oh God, who are rededicating their lives. Help them, O oh God. Help them, O oh Lord. Receive help in the name of Jesus. Receive help in the name of Jesus. Receive help in the name of Jesus. Receive help to be strong. 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 And God's people say, Amen. Let's celebrate. Celebrate them. It's a great decision they have made.